the two high priests, Ananias and Caiaphas, King Herod, Pilate, and many of the names of Christ's disciples, all of them found in one prophetic passage, 41 names in all encoded in Isaiah's prophecy. One fact about the Bible that is not in dispute, and that is that both the Old Testament and the New are full of numbers. Some of these numbers are simple and straightforward. Others leave the reader completely befuddled. Could the key to the Bible encryptions lie in these enigmatic numbers? It would be difficult to discover the number of times seven appears in some significant way in the Bible. Seven churches, seven lampstands, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven thunders, seven angels, seven miracles, seven beatitudes, and the seven days of Genesis. And this barely begins to scratch the surface. Weissmandel discovered Yahweh at a skip interval of seven, and Torah at a skip interval of 49, or seven times seven. And in one of the Bible's most amazing prophecies, Daniel is told that 70 sevens are determined upon the people and upon the holy city. When Peter asks Christ how many times he should forgive a brother, the Savior answers with that same enigmatic number, 70 times 7. Is it possible that there is a key to the code hidden somewhere in the number or combination of numbers of 7? Or are these simply isolated events, independent of one another? Then again, perhaps the key is not numeric at all. The ELS code is, of course, based on numbers. But is there also evidence of other kinds of codes? The most essential truths in the Bible are, of course, put in a form that anyone can understand. But that doesn't preclude the fact that there are mysteries hidden in the Bible that are there as challenges to us. And there are many examples. One of the classic ones is the life of Matthew Fontaine Mari who as a youngster was fascinated as he read the scriptures that there, are pass there was a passage in the Psalm, Psalm 8 and also in Isaiah that makes reference to pathways in the seas. What a strange idea, he thought. Are there pathways in the sea? In 1825 he became a midshipman, spent the rest of his life gathering data, developing what we now know as the science of oceanography. He was able to get captains to gather data. He ended up developing charts of ocean currents in the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the Indian Oceans. And he, as a result, is widely regarded throughout the world as the father of the science of oceanography. All because he was uh, prompted by these hidden little allusions in the Psalms and Isaiah. Two key points regarding the codes. First, we never look to codes or something that esoteric for doctrine or theology that's in any way contradictory to the plain text. The second point is we are expressly prohibited in the Torah from methods of divination. Using the codes to predict the future is divination and is expressly prohibited in the Bible. Predicting the future or not being able to predict the future. Well, that's a controversy for another time after scientists and Bible scholars have had a chance to further study and debate this developing issue. There is a way you can check all this out for yourself. The Bible code is no longer just a name of a scientific research paper. It's also a computer program available on CD-ROM. Bible code software is easy to use, even if the user has no knowledge of Hebrew. The procedure is very simple. First, select the range of text you wish to examine. For example, we will choose from the start of Genesis to the end of Exodus. Now select the range of skips you want the computer to use. We will use for this example a minimum of 10,000 and a maximum of 11,000. Now comes the most important part. Select the word or phrase you want the computer to find in the specified text. For our example, we will use the name Jesus. Click the first name's dictionary and search for the name Jesus. Click on it and the program will automatically insert Yeshua, which is Hebrew for Jesus. Hit the Find Command button and the computer will immediately begin searching the specified text a progress bar tracks the search and a status box tells you how many times the computer has found the Hebrew name for Jesus. Once the name is found, the program shows it on a matrix. And then it will identify other Hebrew words such as Nazarene in the same matrix. Then automatically it will give the English translations. Computer Bible Code software research and development is moving at light year speed 
Yet, it will be years before the full extent of what the Bible code has to tell us is fully known. The new matrix decoding systems combined with translation software, lexicons, and dictionary searches open up the strong possibilities that people may be able to find themselves and or future events in the Bible code. Certainly it seems harmless enough, but the original code researchers warn that even though the computer makes it easy, the process is complex and the results could easily be misinterpreted. The worst thing that could happen is that some people might interpret what they find in the Bible code as commandments, telling them what to do. But nothing of that nature can or even should be inferred. But in spite of the inherent complexities of knowing too little about too much and drawing unwarranted conclusions from them, code researchers and critics alike have found a great deal to ponder in the code research. For many, it has meant a re-examination of long-held but forgotten beliefs. For others, a strengthening of their faith. And for still others, it is just another shot fired in the long war between religionists and humanists. But since even much of the plain surface text of the Bible is still being debated, it should not surprise us that opening the time lock that has sealed the ELS codes for so many centuries has raised some controversy. I believe God in his prophetic foreknowledge knew that our generation would be the most skeptical and the most scientific and computer literate generation in history. And therefore I believe, knowing this, he has provided one last measure of evidence to our generation so that our generation would be without excuse. I think if the Bible codes are demonstrated to be real and valid, then in fact both Jews and Christians will have to re-examine their texts and see truly how they impact on their lives. What are the implications to the world if the Bible code is real? It's hard to say. People believe what they want to believe. People do really what they want to do. One would like to believe that if people took the Bible more seriously, there would be less crime, there would be less hurt, there would be less wars, everyone would love each other as a human being. I hope it would make a big difference. I think the fact is the world will ignore much of the information. It's ignored important lessons in the past. However, the message will be examine how you run your life. I think the implications for Christianity of the Bible codes to the extent they get increasingly validated and people begin to realize what they are, are staggering because it's, we're long overdue as Christians in taking the Bible seriously. The great tragedy is that most Christians have no comprehension of how reliable and how authoritative our Bible really is. And the Bible codes are exciting if for no other reason they cause people to realize that we have something in our hands that's more than simply a collection of, of uh, colorful legends and, and moral uh, principles. There's something far more profound in our hands. For both Jews and Christians alike, it gives us solid scientific evidence that the Bible, which is the Bible for both of our religions, is not the product of a human hand. I think that's very important. If the Bible codes are what they appear to be, evidence of authentication that this collection of 66 books in fact comes from an ultimate author that implies that we have a destiny for which we are going to be accountable and deep down inside that's discomforting the Israeli mathematician who discovered the Bible code Dr. Rips thinks that we have found only the first and simplest level of a code that is probably far more complex and far beyond our reach. As a mathematician, his assumption is that if we find this clearer pattern, there is almost certainly a much larger pattern. But we don't yet have the mathematical tools or perhaps the technology to see it. Rips has devised a measure which goes into two dimensions, whereas the original Torah truly is only one dimensional. It's a one dimensional text, such as a sequence of letters going from beginning to end. Who knows but that a three-dimensional measure might not work even better, or four or five. Who knows how many dimensions there are to the Torah in terms of this code. The discovery of the Bible codes is one of the most exciting events in history. For the first time, there is actually widely accepted scientific proof that the Bible is truly supernatural. I knew I was on to something of real importance. It was the happiest time of my life. You can't escape the fact that these things 
are beyond the realm of just accidental curiosities. They're there by design. What we have exposed is that there is a hidden text in the Torah, and what we see is that in this text, the future, present, and past are all encoded, and thus it encompasses all things. The good news is that some intelligence cared enough about us to leave us these warnings, to give us this information. That's very good news indeed. The question now is what are we going to do with it? That's entirely up to us. In a world that has grown skeptical, even hostile toward the Word of God, the Bible Code has built a bridge between science and religion and forced a re-examination of the ancient truths held sacred by millions of people. The Code also seems to be generating a new awareness of the divinity of the scriptures among individuals of all faiths. This fact alone could make the Bible Code discovery the most important event of the modern era. Because if we really understand that the Bible is the Word of God, we are in possession of God's own saving truth. Seven trumpets, seven thunders, seven angels, seven miracles, seven beatitudes, and the seven days of Genesis. And this barely begins to scratch the surface. Weissmandel discovered Yahweh at a skip interval of seven, and Torah at a skip interval of 49, or seven times seven. And in one of the Bible's most amazing, full of numbers, some of these numbers are simple and straightforward. Others leave the reader completely befuddled. Could the key to the Bible encryptions lie in these enigmatic numbers? It would be difficult to discover the number of times seven appears in some significant way in the Bible. Seven churches, seven lampstands, seven seals, seven prophecies. Daniel is told that seventy sevens are determined upon the people and upon the holy city. When Peter asks Christ how many times he should forgive a brother, the Savior answers with that same enigmatic number, seventy times seven. Is it possible that there is a key to the code hidden somewhere in the number or combination of numbers? The two high priests, Ananias and Caiaphas, King Herod, Pilate, and many of the names of Christ's disciples, all of them found in one prophetic passage, 41 names in all encoded in Isaiah's prophecy. One fact about the Bible that is not in dispute, and that is that both the Old Testament and the New are numbers of seven. Or are these simply isolated events, independent of one another? Then again, perhaps the key is not numeric at all. The ELS code is, of course, based on numbers. But is there also evidence of other kinds of codes? The most essential truths in the Bible are, of course, put in a form that anyone can understand. 